Peter Buswell, Dr. V-O-I-P dot com. 66 blocks, can't get away from them. I like to think about 66 blocks as if they were the analog border controllers of the 21st century. If you're deploying a voice over IP system, invariably you're going to have to deal with um, analog devices. You got your fax machines, your credit card machines, you got security systems, and any good voice over IP deployment really should have at least one analog CO line and one analog phone for power failure and emergency 911 operation. What you're going to learn is that uh, the 66 block is different than a patch panel. Many ways they perform the same function, they just work differently. Phone companies love 66 blocks. IT people love patch panels. Telephone company people like to run cross-connect. And IT people like patch cables. The patch cable is going to be up in the server room, ice air conditioned space. And the telephone company circuit will probably arrive in the main point of entrance, which is down in a dark, dingy, unair conditioned basement. So that explains uh, why the phone company really likes the reliability of punching things down. If you're deploying a Shortel, you'll notice that every Shortel switch has um, an RJ21X type connector uh, built right into the front of the switch. And you will plug in a 25 pair cable here and bring it out to a 66 block or a patch panel. So uh, you can come off the short gear switch and go to a patch panel. There are such uh, devices. But my focus on the 66 block is just the reality that the phone company doesn't terminate equipment in your rack. They typically put it in a 66 block and you've got to bring it up to the rack. So at some place in your deployment, you're going to encounter the 66 block. So let's just deal with it. Notice that the RJ21 connector here on the short gear switch is a male connector, so it's going to want a female type connector. And this uh, cable will then go to the 66 block. Or if you have exact measurements, uh, you can get a cable of 5, 10, 25 foot, um, 50 foot, and it will have an amphenol at both ends. So you can go amphenol to amphenol and not punch anything down. Um, typically, you're going to see either a male or a female connector. Looks like this. That's the 25 pin RJ21X made by Amphenol. And the industry just calls it Amphenol. It's kind of like Xerox and Kleenex. Here's the rat's tail, the other end of this cable. If you're going to get an Amphenol on both sides, be aware that they are male or female and uh, know your length requirement. Uh, typically, for reasons I can't explain, females are red and males are blue. It's just the way the industry does things. Uh, you can actually get these uh, Amphenol connectors, and if you're a real glutton for punishment, or you're really making a business out of doing cabling, you can actually make the Amphenol connector yourself. Typically, for uh, small installations or just a quick patch, you're going to get uh, a cable that is already Amphenol ended. Typical telephone company environment, um, your equipment up top comes out to 25 pair cable and is connected to um, 66 blocks. Typically your station cables will come to another set of blocks and you'll run this blue and white uh, jumper cables between your equipment and the phones and devices you connect to. This is just a standard old world. This is how things were done before Shortel. Just so you know it, uh, there's another type of connector out there. It's called a 110 block. It uses a slightly different punch down tool. You may see it 
uh, in terms of the install base, I would say it's a significantly smaller percentage of the install base than 66 blocks. So I don't know, 80-20 rule would apply here. The actual block itself uh, is typically um, four pins across, and the four pins are such that um, there are two on the left and two on the right that are common. The four are not common across. There is a block that has all four connectors common across, and you'll know it when you see it. But this block here is a split 50. So typically, you're going to um, put uh, a 25 pair cable down this side, and your cross connects on this side, and a bridging clip between the two center clips. Um, that's a, a typical uh, configuration. It's 18 or 22 gauge uh, wire is what we anticipate here. Here's a close-up of uh, a typical cabling environment. So uh, again, you'll use these bridging clips to connect the left side of the block to the right side of the block. And you'll do this primarily for separation. This is where I like to think of it as a border controller, right? I want to separate my, I'm, I'm troubleshooting and I want to disconnect the internal equipment from the external equipment. And I do that by pulling the bridging clip. Here's another shot of it. A very standard uh, telephone company environment. The color code. You, if you're actually going to cut down a cable, you need to know that the 25 pair cable is broken up into a number of binders and the binders uh, have a color code. You will need to learn the color code. I've got uh, two uh, sayings I use to remember them. Bell operators give better service. So blue, orange, green, brown, slate. Every one of these pairs uh, will have a blue, an orange, a green, a brown, and a slate or gray uh, wire combination. And there are uh, one, two, three, four, five binders in a cable. So this one will be blue, orange, green, brown, slate, blue, orange, green, brown, slate. But you'll notice that the uh, binder color changes. And that's where I get my Winchester rifles bring you victory, or white, red, black, yellow, violet. Blue, orange, green, brown, slate, and then white, red, black, yellow, violet to remember the binders. And uh, that's useful. Um, again, if you're actively involved with this cable all the time, this is, you know, child's play. But as the world uh, evolves, uh, this is becoming more of a black art well known to those who know it well. So let's take a look at how to actually physically connect and punch down a cable. We're going to demonstrate how to punch down a 25 pair cable uh, to a 66 block and uh, this is a 25 pair cable. Uh, now this is just a, what you call a cable tail because we're just demonstrating how to do it. Let's we're not going to run a feed cable, but a lot of times these feed cables are run between um, IDFs and uh, and uh, throughout the building, normally used for voice cables. But it's uh, 50 wires, 25 pair, and uh, Patrick is here helping me. That's the 66 block. And he's going to divide out the different colors. Why don't you give us the color code there, Patrick? Okay, you have the five primary colors, and those are the white, uh, red, black, yellow, and violet. So what I'm looking for right now are all of the whites. Then you have your secondary colors. So you see I have all white here. My secondary colors are blue, orange, green, brown, and slate. So we're going to start with white, blue as my primary, and then we just follow the secondary colors go throughout all the primaries. So we have white, orange, and we have white, green, and notice I'm just setting them into the 66 block to begin with before I punch those five uh, pairs down. So I set the first and everybody does it their own way, but I, I always set the first 
five in and I just work with the second five groupings. So here we go. So now I have the first five in. And that's under the white and primary color. And then the secondary colors repeat themselves. So the next one would be red and be red blue. All five of the white primary colors down on the 66 block using my 66 bit tool and a little punch. Notice that I'm just barely pulling away as I punch down a pair. I pull away a little bit and I end up with all five pairs punched down. So now my secondary color, my I mean my second color is red. So I'm looking for all my reds. I have red blue, red orange, red green, red brown, red slate. So I'm looking for those pairs right now. Okay, now I have all my red. Uh, now I'm going to look for my red blue. And red will go first. It is the primary color. Red blue. Set that in. And then red orange. And you'll have to look for the primary. So you can see the red is just predominantly red. So and then it's red and then red orange. Red and then red green. If they come on twisted from one another, you can find the colors pretty easily. And then red brown. You know what else too? People can find the uh you can actually find the color code right on our website or anywhere on the internet of the 25 pair. I've got all. It's just a technique on how to pairs. get them down also. While you're looking for the next primary color, I'm going to show the, the, the punch down tool that you can buy at cablesupply.com. And this is what it looks like. Uh, this is one we've used for years. And it has, if you notice, this is 66 punch down. Uh, blade and in on one side it has a cutting edge so as he's pushing the wire into the the, the, uh, the binding post uh, he's also cutting the excess off as, as you notice also I know uh, that he also has a 110 blade in there and the blades are interchangeable so when we're doing 66 you put a 66 block uh, blade in there when you're doing 110 you put a 110 in there you ready for the next primary color I'm ready for the next one notice yeah. While he's cutting, while he's doing that, he's using the, uh, uh, you know, it's wrapping over the top through the individual little uh, uh, binding posts. Uh, it's pulling it tight, and then when he's cutting it with the punch down tool, he's cutting the bottom part, not the top. So he's cutting the excess off once it goes through the binding post. It will punch itself in as you push. Okay, my last primary color is violet, and I have set them in. Notice violet blue, violet orange, violet green, violet brown, and violet slate. That's my last five pairs of a 25-pair cable. And I'll go ahead and punch those down. Letting the blade ride under the cable and then put it on the pins, push, impact, it cuts. And notice over here on the right hand side, nice, clean, 25 pairs. White blue, white orange, white green, white brown, white slate. We go to red, we go to black, we go to yellow, we go to violet, 25 pairs total. Good.